Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Their $100 million Netflix deal is reportedly having trouble because of the Hollywood writers' strike. Neil Sean with me now. All right, Neil, when we say the deal is in trouble, what exactly does that mean? <laughs> Good afternoon, Stuart from London. Some people might see this as a blessing, you know, um, <laughs> yes. because the story goes that Harry and Meghan have had to shut down production. Let me tell you the true story. This is a great PR spin by their team. They, they don't have anything in production. They're talking about doing something uh, in Africa with Prince Harry, which sounds as dull as it sounds as it could be. And then, of course, Pearl was binned by Netflix, so that went nowhere, even with the inclusion of David Furnish and Sir Elton John. And then, of course, you know, the got snubbed recently by the Emmys. So the bottom line is they're working through things. I think the biggest thing they could do, seriously, Stuart, would be to come out and support the Hollywood strike. Perhaps that may win them back uh, some favourable fans within the industry, because clearly there's some sort of dichotomy going on there between why they've not been nominated. It doesn't, in many people's mind, make sense, because if you have the biggest downloaded ever streaming thing in the history of that particular company, and you've got nothing that says quite a bit so yeah, there's plenty of space yet okay <laughs> look I, i've not seen much of them the, the, the two seem to have kept a relatively low profile they just don't burst into the headlines much are they still together Oh, yes, very much together, because need to be. I mean, what is interesting, you say you don't see much, what you've seen over the last, say, three months are ten very strategic PR spins, normally with Meghan, you know, the hiking just before the coronation. We saw the thing at the farmer's market last week where she went in, no dogs allowed, but went in with the dog. It's all there to just detract. That was literally set up to detract away from Catherine at uh, Wimbledon. You know, it's a very clever well, marketing ploy that they come up with. Middleton, she absolutely stole the show at Wimbledon. I mean, she met yes. the stars at Djokovic and uh, Alcaraz. Uh, she just won hands down, it seemed to me. Do you think Meghan Markle is jealous? Do you know, a lot of people say that, and let's be honest, you know, they're both very good-looking ladies, there's no dispute in that. But I think, you know, the problem is, I thought, I think one of them thought they could go away and take the crown, but there can only be one crown, and the crown belongs to the future Queen of England. I mean, as you rightly said, Stuart, at Wimbledon, people were absolutely in awe. Brad Pitt, you know, was uh, colouring up. He was a little bit shy to go and approach to even speak. There was this big debate about whether, uh, you know, people should stand up. And, and that sort of stuff, and bow, you know, the players coming onto court and all that. A lot of people want to see the return of that, but it was actually the Duke of Kent that suggested perhaps only senior members, you know, needed to, to do that as the court players came on. And I would say, when you look at Catherine just turning up, looking resplendent in green, her, you know, the three visits that she made uh, this year alongside Queen Camilla uh, and, of course, Prince William, they definitely stole the show. But I think more than that, they the, there is this sort of jealousy for front covers, not from Catherine, I might point out, but you can feel it from Meghan Markle, a lady who lives in the Norma Desmond mode, I would say. <laughs> good one. Neil, that was a fine <laughs> ending to a good interview. Thanks very much, Neil. I know we'll see bye you bye. again soon. Good luck, man. Thanks.